Hello, I'm back. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, okay, so we are going to talk about the full moon in Scorpio. I just made it in the nick of time. <laughs> there, you know what? Here's the funny thing. I was, there's just so much astrology and the astrology doesn't stop. It just keeps on going. And, and I'm, and it's, you know, there's other people that are making videos and they're just getting ahead of the curve or doing it ahead of time. And I feel like I'm barely making it in on time. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, let me get to the point. Let's do, let's do the thing where I talk about each sign and then, you know, and how this affects you and uh, which area of life it is for you. And then we'll talk about what it is that, you know, we're looking at with this full moon um, for for Scorpio, in Scorpio. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So uh, for Aries, the, oh, let's try it this way. Okay. Uh, for Aries, this is in your eighth house, right? So your eighth house has to do with, with, uh, shared money, shared resources, um, maybe banks, um, finding out mysterious, looking into the mysteries of life and things that are taboo and hidden and occult and, um, being really investigative, um, that kind of stuff. And, um, all right. So, uh, Taurus, this is in your seventh house. So your seventh house of um, uh, partnerships, partnerships with uh, that are personal or um, business partners or um, significant other. It, it also could be like a real somebody just really close to you, like a best friend or something. Um, Gemini, this is in your sixth house. So the job that you do, the way you serve, the, you know, your daily life, you know, um, your routines, if you have routines, <laughs> um, uh, what else? Um, your health even, right? Pets. Um, cancer. Let me just double check here real quick. Yeah. Cancer. This is your fifth house, your fifth house of um, fun, pleasure, enjoyment. Um, uh, what else? You know, if children, um, dating, romance. Um, Leo, this is in your fourth house. Yeah. Your fourth house of home and family. Pretty simple. Um, and Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So Virgo, this is in your third house of communication, thinking, um, writing, speaking, um, anything local, like your local community, um, uh, neighborhood, um, even siblings. Um, and Libra. Libra, this is in your second house of your priorities, your self-worth, your, your possessions, your, um, your resources. Yeah. And Scorpio, this is in your first, first house, first house of, um, your personality, your physical body, how you present yourself to the world, um, how people see you. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, but you know, your, your life overall, you generally speaking your life. Um, Sagittarius, this is in your 12th house, your 12th house of your subconscious, your mental health, your, uh, sleep and rest and, um, even any self-sabotaging behaviors. And Capricorn, this is in your 11th house of your friendships, 
um, you know, how you interact with your friends, how you, the friends, inter what type of friends you, you tend to pick and um, the groups that, you know, the, your groups and um, also what? Oh, wishes, dreams, um, any long distance, like future goals, you know, that you're thinking. Um, Aquarius, this is in your 10th house of your public reputation, your status, your reputation, your career. Um, what else? Yeah, just how, how you're going to be known, basically. Um, and finally, Scorpio. Uh, it's not Scorpio. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Pisces. Pisces, this is in your ninth house of connecting to spirituality, the divine source, the creator, um, higher learning, um, you know, could be a uh, long distance travel, global thinking, philosophy, even, you know, the philosophy that you have, worldview. Okay, so, all right. Let's look at the chart here real quick. All right, sorry about the glare. Um, I'm gonna have to back up because we got a lot going. We've got like a whole thing going, you know, it's not just one side of the chart. Um, so the sun is here in Taurus, right? And then the moon is over here in Scorpio. Um, and this is happens on the full moon all the time, right? We always have the sun is shining its light on the moon, okay? And now the thing is, is that um, uh, while the moon is waning, right? It's decreasing, you know, and the moon moves through these signs pretty quickly, right? So it'll move through all of the Scorpio, like, because it takes only, what, two, two and a half days to get through a sign. So, you know, it'll move quickly, like in a two and a half days, whatever. And it's in the four. So it's also four degrees, right? That's, that's significant, right? Because it doesn't always happen with four degrees. So four degrees, um, what do we know about four degrees? Four degrees is very stable, right? Solid. It's the building block, you know, that kind of thing. So that's important. Um, and then both of these, then we also have this uh, line here and this line here, which are squares. So because, um, you know, if we, it's it's 90 degree angle. It's a, you know, if you, one, two, three, wait, wait, one, two, three um, uh, signs away. So that, you know, makes it a square. Um, and this is, this, um, so this pattern overall is called a T-square. Now the thing, you can see the T, right? There's there's an upside down T, if you know, like this line right here and this line, that's that's the T. Um, so it's a T-square. Um, and we have squares and then the opposition. Um, now this line tells us that, you know, there's a balancing between the head and the, the heart, right? And then the squares tell us that, you know, there's, there's, it's challenging, right? And it's going to be difficult to find solutions, but solutions can be found, right? Um, I, I've said before that, you know, when we, when we look at a square, we're thinking of like, my example is like, if I had a, a garden with carrots, right? And the rabbits are trying to eat my carrots. Well, I'm just going to have to work harder to find a solution so the rabbits don't eat my carrots, right? And now it's significant that it's um, up here with Pluto because Pluto is the natural ruler of Scorpio, right? So, um, and then also we had this old time ruler of Mars, which is over here in Pisces, okay? So, you know, I also have two degrees because we still have the two degrees of, of Scorpio. Also, 
pretty significant, right? Because like in the last video, I was talking about how um, two just reminds me of, of intuition. You know, I think of like uh, the high priestess, you know, um, but and so and then the other thing, too, if we look at it, if you if you want to keep going with the tarot, right, um, four reminds me of the emperor, which is Aries. We've got a lot going on here in Aries, right? We've got um, all of this stuff here. By the way, we're still in Mercury retrograde and we're going to be in Mercury retrograde. Uh, technically, it, you know, it's it's kind of finished um, in two days. I don't think I'm going to make a video about that. Yeah, probably not. But um, yeah, so technically it ends on the 25th, but we have a post retrograde shadow. And that post retrograde shadow, you know, continues on for two weeks after. So to me, I, I'm looking at like, we still have this Mercury retrograde energy um, until like May 9th, you know? So that's, we got to keep that in mind, right? So in other words, um, I personally, I think it's, it's, um, be careful with your thinking, be careful with your actions, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Um, now going back to this moon, the moon is in, in the fall, how do I say this? Moon is, um, in fall, um, in Scorpio, meaning that the moon is not comfortable here in Scorpio, right? Let's think about, because Scorpio is fixed to water, right? Aquarius is fixed. Uh, this, uh, Taurus is fixed. So we've got this fixed thing going here. Anybody knows that these fixed signs, Taurus, Aquarius and um, Scorpio, they, it takes a lot, a lot for them to change, right? It do, they don't change easily. They're fixed. Um, they hold strong to what they are, you know? And so with this being in fall, it's weak. It's, it's not comfortable. It doesn't do well. We know that Scorpio has a lot of emotion, yeah? And so the moon is also emotion. Uh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't do very well. Um, uh, maybe it's too much emotion, frankly, you know. And now I wanted to do uh the Scorpio thing justice, right? Because um you know, it's funny because here's the thing, Scorpio, one of the key words for Scorpio is mystery and secrets, which is true. You know, we do have mystery and secrets with Scorpio, right? So I was doing a little bit more reading and one of these days I'm going to have to show you the books that I'm using as references. The thing is, is that like, there's so many books out there that I could look at, but I feel like I, I have enough information to look at. <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. But now when I look at its opposite, which is Taurus, Taurus is simple, okay? If Taurus is simple, Scorpio is complex, yeah? Um, and so that's one thing. Um, the other thing, too, is that, you know, Scorpio, it, we've, most of us know that Scorpio um, can be the scorpion, you know, that, that creature, or it can be the phoenix, it can be the eagle, and I've even read that it can be a dove. That brings me to... Um, uh, another point, which was like, you know, this, this, um, astrology thing is like an, um, unfolding story. And, and one of the most recent video that I did was talking about this Uranus and Jupiter conjunction. And, you know, it's Sabian symbol 
of or was it I don't know if it was this um this one or this one I, mean, I think it was this one I can't remember but um one of the messages for either this or this was a white dove over troubled waters and it this is Pisces right Pisces is the water we've got um Saturn Saturn is creates a difficulty <laughs> a, a, a difficult test troubled waters right and here we've got the scorpion Scorpio like or the white dove over troubled waters I just when I was thinking about this I was just thinking how much let me move over a little bit okay I was just thinking how much um you know it just the the message the message is just like it's so strong it's so strong because we just see it over and over like it's just it's just telling us again and again similar messages or repeating the message the the same general message over so that we really understand what's going on you know um and I think I had said it's no coincidence that Pluto here, right? This is power transformation. And of course, it's an Aquarius, right? Aquarius is the rebel. Um, and so, you know, we're, this is giving power to the rebels in society. Um, and, oh, this four degrees, by the way, when I look this up, you know, the Sabian symbol, um, each, you know, every single, just as a reminder, just as a, you know, in case you didn't um, see, hear me say it before, every, every spot um, in the circle has its own message. So there are 360 degrees. And so there are 360 messages. This spot right here, that is the youth, like a child, um, that holds the can, the lit candle. I thought that was so interesting because the child is Aries. Aries is holding the candle, lighting the candle. Um, and when I think of a lit candle, it reminds me of, you know, spirituality, religion, um, you know, these types of things used in ceremonies. And I think it also talks about ceremonies, something, you know, devotional, um, very meaningful, like, you know, that kind of thing. So we've got the youth and spirituality here, right? Um, and it, so it, it just feels like this message is just coming again and again in different ways, trying to get our attention. Um, yeah. And so, so the thing is, is that, um, again, I took some notes. Now, I, like I said, fixed Taurus, fixed Aquarius, fixed, uh, Scorpio. There's a missing there's one fixed thing that's not included, which is Leo. Leo's fixed, right? But it's not included. This is the missing piece. Um, and again, like on an esoteric level, esoteric meaning hidden, like the hidden level, when we have, if there's missing Leo, one of the key words for Leo is pride, right? Pride, ego, that sort of thing, right? And it's interesting because Scorpios, you know, going back to the different types of Scorpios, you know, the key, one of the, the phrase for Scorpio is I desire, right? I desire. What do they desire? Because that's really significant. Is it things? Is it objects? Is it people? Or is it connecting with the divine? Is it connecting with divine will? Because here's the thing, on an evolutionary, uh, on an evolutionary story, 
each one of these signs is pro is is learning the lesson and moving on to the next one. So Scorpio is learning its lesson, but also mo moving on to the next one, which is Sagittarius. In other words, it's letting go of of objects, people, and and moving on to transcend that and desire divinity, de desire um, like, uh, you know, becoming one with um, the divine um, and, you know, that thing. And that's interesting too, because this goes back to that white dove over troubled waters, right? The dove being, um, it can be a symbol of, of Scorpio on like in a very hidden, like a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Rarely used symbol, but I, it's, it still is a symbol for that. Right. Um, and so, you know, uh, what else? Oh, the thing is, is about this full moon is that we, you know, because Scorpio is water, but it's in ancient times, its ruler was Mars. So this is a very watery or very fiery or both very watery and fiery, right? Very interesting. Um, and I'm trying to remember if there was something else I wanted to tell you. Um, hmm, hmm. oh, no. Okay. Yeah. So, so when the, the, any, any one of these fixed ones, whether it's Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus, or even Leo, they're, they're, they're moving when they go in an evolutionary way, right? They have to change. They have to mutate. They have to become mutable, right? So, so Scorpio is becoming more mutable to be like, oh, there we go. To be like Sagittarius, right? To have that global view, which is also a thing with um, Aquarius because Aquarius is the humanitarian, right? Um, and so this is about saying, I'm willing to change. Willing to change what? I'm willing to change in, you know, your part of your, ch where you have Scorpio, right? And saying, you know, I'm willing to change. And at the same time, balancing it out with the Taurus part of your chart. And that Taurus part of your chart is like where you're building stability, where you're building self-worth, where are you building, um, you know, uh, your own, using your own self as your own resource, you know, um, and, and making things more simple for yourself, if that makes sense. Um, and... Yeah, I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Um, I think that's about it. <laughs> um, well, that was pretty good, I think. I think I kept it short enough. Okay, let me just put this down. Um, so yeah, full moon, right? I think the thing is, is that, you know, with the full moon, we also think of, of uh, completion, right? But it's also like a harvest, you know? You could think of it like a harvest too, right? Or it could be a letting go, but all of, or all of the above, if that makes sense, right? So it's kind of like all of it. And now for the past six months, in your part of your chart where you have Scorpio, there has been this buildup of transformation, um and uh regeneration and um even i don't know what uh you know an obsession a desire um definitely a desire of something right 
and now it's completed now it's done now it's we've we've harvested it's come to fruition right and so we can say all right now we are willing to move on because that that part is done you know and we are willing to become the eagle the dove over troubled waters i feel like i look funny in this in this thing i'm recording on my phone it feels like i look weird i don't know i'll watch it back and see how it is but um and you know i i i definitely think that um we are most people are looking to find more stability especially at this time and and um uh strength in ourselves you know that kind of thing which is and power right because pluto is also power i don't know if i mentioned that so um all of these things are at play and you know the thing is is with the full moon or even the new moon all of these things are maybe you started to feel these like three days before or you know it started to come on and now we'll we'll also feel this for the next three days or maybe longer right but it, it'll go on for um you know for a while right and and we we take this stuff in and and we use this energy contemplate uh, even contemplating on it for you know 10 minutes or something is is excellent you know in my opinion i don't know but yeah okay i'm done rambling <laughs> <laughs> um thank you again for hanging out with me and I will uh definitely see you soon talk to you soon um take care I wish you well happy full moon